This is a quick section showing how circles work in a coordinate plane. Some of you may have done this in Algebra 1, but you will all see this again in Algebra 2. I know you're excited. Here I have a circle in a coordinate plane. The center of the circle is here. I'll label that point generically as HK. I didn't just pull those letters out of thin air. H and K are traditionally the variables you use to represent the center of a circle. Now let's look at a specific point on the circle. Notice that I chose to have a circle centered here and a point picked on the circle that both weren't at a nice round whole number. I don't want you thinking about a specific value for either of them at this point. I will label this point that I have chosen on the circle as XY. Now if I connect up my center with a point I have chosen, then I form a radius. I will label that radius as R. This is a generic setup for any circle on a coordinate plane. The next question I want to ask is, how long is R? What is its value? How should we go about finding that? Well, R is a distance between two points. And what formula do we use to find the distance between any two points on a coordinate plane? The distance formula! Now let's plug in the H and the K and the R into the distance formula to make it look like this. Then we square both sides, transforming the equation into this. There it is. This is the standard form for an equation of a circle. It's the only formula you need to know from this section. A couple of things about it though that I need to highlight. First, notice that there are subtraction symbols in there. It is minus H and minus K. Thus, if you had this equation, since the equation already has negative symbols in it, since this equation says x minus 3 and y plus 1, the center is actually at positive 3 and negative 1. Make sure you flip the signs when you're going from equation to coordinate of the center, or vice versa. The second thing to note is to make sure you realize that the equation has the radius squared. So for this example equation, you need to take the square root of 16 in order to get that the radius of this circle would be 4. Those are the two main things to be careful of. Flip the signs to get the center of the circle, and take the square root to get the radius. Now we are going a bit back to algebra class. You undoubtedly saw, many times, something like this. When encountering a quadratic equation like this one, you generally had four possible ways to solve the equation. If the equation is easily factorable, then that is the way to go. If you only need an approximate answer and you are good with your graphing calculator, then you can get a good approximation by graphing it. If you needed an exact answer, but factoring was either impossible or too difficult, then you were left with two options. You could complete the square or use the quadratic formula. I am focusing on the complete the square part for this lesson. Just a recap for the steps for completing a square. Step 1, you need to move the number over to the right side, like this. Step 2, you need to figure out how much you need to add to the left side in order to make a perfect square. The number you need to add is always half of the coefficient of the x term. In this case, 8 squared. So you would take half of 8 to get 4, and then square that to get 16. 16 is how much you need to add to both sides. This is what it would look like. Once you add the 16 to both sides, we clearly should simplify the right side, in this case, to 35. From here, it is step 3. You need to factor the left side. If you did step 2 properly, it should be a perfect square. Then is step 4. You need to take the square root of both sides. When you do, don't forget the plus minus. Then finally, as a final step, you need to move the number over. Now you have your two answers for x. They would be the same numbers that would pop out of the quadratic formula if you had used that process instead. Hopefully, this is review. Hopefully, you have done completing the square before. Now I did all that because with circles, and a lot of other conics that you will do in Algebra 2, you need to do a double completing of a square. Here's how. Let's say you're faced with this problem. Think about the standard form for a circle. There are two perfect squares in the equation, so I need to complete the square for both the x and y parts simultaneously to turn our equation into standard form. The first step is still the same. You just move the number over to the right side. To complete the square for the x part, we look at the coefficient for the x term, which is negative 8 here. We need to take half of the negative 8 and then square it. Negative 4 squared is 16, so we need to add 16 to both sides of our equation. Now we need to look at the y. For that, we need to look at the coefficient of the y term. For the y, we need to take half of 4 and then square it. 2 squared is 4, so we add 4 to both sides. From here, we factor and simplify. That will get us to our standard form for a circle. Once you get enough practice with doing this, you'll be able to do both parts at the same time. Lastly, this wasn't part of the problem asked. But incidentally, from this equation, it should be quick to figure out that the center of this circle is at 4, negative 2, and it has a radius of 6 units. 